expandacraft.com. At the end of this video, we will show pictures of the finished product, both on the trailer, in the water, with the sail up and without the sail. So make sure you stay to the end. Hi, it's Wesley with Expandacraft here in a very special um, and, and very particular video. This is a full-on how-to install a, a, an outrigger kit onto a canoe or kayak. In this case, it's a kayak. In this case, it happens to be a, an older, one of the original uh, uh, Hobies with the pedals. And we're going to, with this one, put a two-sided outrigger on it. But the installation is the same thing for a two-side as it is a one-sided outrigger. So you're going to learn a lot with this. Uh, first of all, I want to go over what tools you need to do this installation yourself and what talent you might need because it really is simple. You just have to take your time, think it through, and, and make that happen. Tool number one, probably the most used one, a drill gun. Um, you're also going to need some drill bits assorted sizes. Wouldn't hurt if you had an electric. Perhaps vice grips. Oops. You're going to need um, a couple of, uh, well, at least one of these wrenches. And then you're going to need this tool. Now, this tool is a rivet gun. However, on this particular installation, you're going to notice that we do not use the special rivets, which I'm going to show you in just a moment, um, because we can get our hands, this boat has access holes right where we need them so that we can get underneath and put a, a, a more substantial bolt in there rather than the rivets. Uh, but we're going to show you how that rivet works in just a second. Okay, so here's how the rivets work. Now this rivet is kind of special. It's not like the regular mushing rivet. It actually comes out with three prongs like a toggle bolt. And I'm going to show you exactly how that works. Let's say this is your kayak and this is your flange. Well, you line it up, you drill your hole, and so inside your kayak where you can't reach, that's this thing. So if you can't reach there, you take your little tool, you push it on, and you squeeze it down, push it down, squeeze it, push it, squeeze it, push it, and you'll hear it this time. Oh, maybe one more time. Ah, hear that pop? That's why they call them pop rivets. Now, this part comes out, and you'll notice that it has a triangular flange on the back. That is very, very secure. You put two, three, four of those in one of your flanges, it's not going to move. Okay, so once again, here is a single rivet. Of course, you would put more than just one. But this is a single rivet. This is pretending this is the outside of your kayak. This is the gunnel, if you will. Inside your kayak, if you can't get your hand in there, is this. That's different than a standard rivet, which just kind of mushes out. And those mushing style, the traditional style rivets, can pull right out of plastic. This, as you can see, involves more area or surface area in the inside of your kayak. And if you're shooting more than one of these, it's a pretty secure uh, fastener. All right. Along with your kit, if you don't happen to have a drill press, as I do, or even a drill guide, which goes onto a drill that lets you use a drill and, and drill a straight hole through a long uh, surface, um, I provide you with this. So what you do is you need a clamp, or you can just hold it really good and tighter, tape it down. You 
taper down or you clamp it like so in the area that you want to drill the hole. And you'll see this one has a hole in it, so you just line it up, drill your hole through that uh, cross tube or the runner rails. We'll talk about that more later. And you'll have a straight hole uh, without having to have a drill press. Okay, so now what we're going to do is kind of preliminarily position the cross tubes where I'm going to want them. In this particular kayak, it has a pedal drive, so I have to put the front as far forward so that it doesn't interfere with the pedal drive, so the pedals don't hit here, as well as it has a mast hole or base, and we don't want that to happen. It just happens to be that this kayak and most cross tube, the front cross tube, fits beautifully just behind the mast base and just in front of the swing of the, the last of the longest pedal stroke. Now, your kit comes with eight flanges like this. They're also L brackets or flange L brackets. Um, they do not come pre-drilled. As a matter of fact, they don't even come with the rounded edges because not all of them need that. Um, it's because I can't make a kit for every single kayak and canoe on the market. Uh, I'd have to have the schematics for all of them and it just doesn't work. So a little bit of this is going to be on you. Just, just drilling some holes and marking your places. Uh, this particular kayak, I actually made this flange, bell bracket, smaller. So I cut it so that it will fit here. But not every canoe needs that, and the larger one is just fine, especially the newer Hobies, which have a larger, flatter gunnel. Okay, so let's go back here. This is where we're going to start. I got one placed here and here. I'm going to do one on the same other side. These two holes are the same, so I can line them up. But the other thing that you can do is, and I'm going to get another tool, you can take a square and look down the center line of your boat to make sure that this cross tube is square or perpendicular with the center line of the boat. Okay, so. Here I have the cross tube lined up properly. Cross tube. And I've made sure with my square that everything is lined up. So this is square to the center line of the boat. I've placed my L bracket or flange in place. Now I'm just going to hold it and I'm gonna shoot, uh, let me see, I need the quarter inch hole. In this case, I'm shooting bolts rather than the rivets. So I'll, I'll explain that in a moment. You drill the hole through your kayak. Now, this is where you would um, put a rivet if it wasn't for the fact that we can get our hands in here. You put the, uh, the bolt on uh, or through and then you can feed it through like so. I'm gonna, it'll block. Okay, I just had to reposition so I didn't block. It's important that you do one hole at a time. If you drill both holes before putting the bolt through, you're probably never gonna line it up. It always comes out just a little off. So always make sure you do that. So, since I can get up in there, I'm going to put the, uh, it takes a little dexterity, I mean, I am trying to put it in blind. Okay, now, the other thing is this. With nylock bolts, that's nylon locking nuts, that is not bolts, you don't want to spin them on with a power tool because the nylon will heat up and seize to the bolt 
and then you got to get a grinder out and grind off the the, the nut uh, the bolt and and that's just a mess so you do it by hand with a regular screwdriver okay now that I have reached under and tightened the first bolt I can shoot the second one in here throw my bolt in there and do the same thing but basically all I'm doing is I'm getting a flange on this side and an L bracket flange on that side because later what I'm going to do and you'll see is I'm going to come by and shoot a quarter inch hole this way through it and that's going to be where we put the uh, the keeper that'll hold this um, cross tube so that you can spin it off and take it off in just a matter of a, of a couple of minutes and well anyway I'm going to do that we'll be back shortly All right, so here we have two of the flanges. I put one of the forward and one of the aft flanges on. Again, this particular one, I put two quarter 20 stainless screws in, but that's only because, well, I can get my hand under there. A lot of kayaks, you can't get your hand in there, and that's when you use the blind rivets instead. So anyway, I took this T-square and I lined it up so that I could see the center line of the boat and the center line in this case is where the foot pedals go. Now I know that this is precisely perpendicular to the center line of the boat and that's what you're looking for. It's really not difficult to do. You just have to, you know, measure twice, cut once, that's the rule, uh, and, and just pay attention. And it's really pretty simple. Okay, now that we have had the uh, the back uh, or aft cross tube uh, installed, again we'd use the bolts because we could reach under instead of the blind rivets. Here on the front cross tube, on this particular old Hobie, you can also reach your hand in there. So we could get to the back side of this one and we could use bolts there too. Bolts are great uh, if you can reach in there. If not, that's when you use the special rivets. Okay, how we lined it up. Uh, we have taken these, where you can see that the mast, if you were to put a mast in here, it's still clear. And if you put your pedal drive in here, your feet don't hit this. Just happens to work on this boat. So we lined it up and we measured from the back since we know that that one's straight, I got exactly 68 inches here. I got exactly 68 inches here. You can also, you know, do your cross to cross, but believe me, it's plenty square. Um, if you don't get it absolutely perfectly square, it just doesn't matter because when we put the runner rails on here, it's important that we get the runner rails straight, but there's a little room for fudging. So uh, if you make a tiny error, it's no big deal. As a matter of fact, with the flanges on this boat, because remember, every boat is a little different. This flange is a little off center of the other flange, the L bracket, if you will. But it doesn't matter because once we shoot the hole through it, so the hole may be a little to the left of here and the right of there, but as long as it's a hole through there, you're good. Okay, now we're talking about installation of the riser. Now, when you order like a, a Hobie one-sided outrigger, when you order a, a, an outrigger where you're going to be using runners instead of the cross tubes, they don't come pre-drilled. These, these actually are pre-drilled. These are, these are actually used uh, from another boat. Uh, this is an undrilled riser. And when you get them, hopefully we will have drilled out this 
to a 25 60 fourths drill hole. That's a little bit bigger than a 3 eighths. But I said that because when you go to put in your riser, you have to have this compression strut, if you will. It's just a piece of PVC. Put it in. If you have the pre-drilled riser that you've ordered with your cross tubes, you want to make sure there'll be a dot drilled right here like this. I'll just go ahead and do it. There'll be a dot drilled here. The dot goes on the side where the Expand Craft logo is and the head of the carriage bolt goes through there. So the dot gets the carriage bolt head on the side of the Expand Craft label. That's the outside. And you just kind of fit, whoa! You fish it through. And these bolts are 12 inches long. Eh, it's kind of dark. Aha! Ta and da. Uh, so if you drill it out slightly more than the 3 8 hole, then you don't have to thread it on. Otherwise, you're sitting there threading, 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 threading. Uh, but typically, that's what I do at the shop. All right, now, this is important. Do not over tighten this bolt or you will crack the riser right here where the bolt is. You see the square head here? You just tighten it up enough to where that square head mushes into the, um, the riser. See how it's mushing into the plastic? Once it gets there and you got like a fingernail here, just a little torque is all you need. Now look, it has some wiggle. No problem. A little wiggle is not going to hurt it at all. Um, but if you tighten it down too much, you will crack it. And that is not covered under manufacturing uh, defect. That's, you put it on too tight. So it's flush pretty well down here. And it wiggles just a little bit. I'm going to do all four of them. All right. Now that we've got our risers mounted and you have this bolt sticking out, you can um, cut that off. I recommend using a hacksaw. If you use a grinder, it's possible that you could heat it up so much that it would seize to the plastic. You don't want that. So a slow speed, like uh, maybe even just a uh, sawzall, that would, that would be. But you don't want to get it red hot with a grinder tool. All right, so now... All right, so now we're mounting the cross tube and what we've done is I've made sure now these cross tubes come to you um, at eight feet or excuse me one inch short of eight feet because if it's eight feet it's oversized and shipping goes through the roof so I keep it one inch short of eight feet that means that 47 and a half is the center so I make sure by measuring in this part of the kayak here to make sure that I am center. Now that it's center, this is a freehand um, drill, meaning each time you do a hole, it's going to be special. And I'm going to show you something that you're going to do. Uh, and if you'll notice, uh, this flange had to be set slightly this way this flange or L bracket has to be slightly that way. So I'm going to line up my hole and I'm going to drill the hole, not in the center, not down low, but somewhat higher than that, but all the way through. I just kind of get a good eyeball on it. It's a quarter inch hole with a quarter inch bolt. So it's kind of tight to go in there. 
But here's the thing. When you put your boat together, you need to know which of your cross tubes goes where. Because it's custom cut, there's nothing, you can't, this one won't fit on the front. And it won't fit upside down or backwards. So what I do is, I just take a mark by going. So you have one dot here. Then I'm going to put two dots. Go. All right. Now that I've got my hole drilled, um, you can wallow it out a little bit. And you can even take a deburring tool uh, if, if you've got sharp edges or if it's a little ugly on there and deburr the hole and make it neat and tidy. This one came out pretty quick. Look at there how slick that is. So the bolt goes right through and I spin it on. However, if you are going to be out with an electric motor or even a gas motor on a boat like this, they could rattle loose. So put you some plumber's tape, maybe some Loctite or what have you. And it is, in this particular case, it's a, uh, um, a quarter 20 panhead Phillips. You can take a, a screwdriver and put it on. Generally speaking though, if you tweak it down there good, it's going to stay. It wouldn't hurt to put either like a rubber band or a piece of plumber's tape there if you're going to motorize your, your yak it could possibly rattle loose. That's all there is to it. Well, I did one, now I'm gonna do the other, which is just the same thing. And once I get this one set, then I can start putting my cross tube, uh, excuse me, my runner rails onto the cross tubes. Cross tubes go across the boat or kayak. Runner rails are runners, they run parallel to the kayak's center line. I'm gonna drill this hole, and then we'll get started on the front. when you want to take this thing apart that's all you have to do to take the outriggers off of the kayak is spin four bolts off it only takes a minute and a half if now that we have the aft cross tube fixed it's in place and we know that it's square we've got to make sure we've already also made sure that the front one is square but is it in line with this one? I've placed loosely the runner rail onto the two cross tubes. I'm gonna take my four foot square and I'm gonna line it up. And I see that the runner rail is square and it's on the end of this cross tube but it looks like an inch. I have an inch to go on that side. So here, before I screw this down, looks like now I'm going to put this right here. You see how I have this lined up square to the edge. This one is lined up square to the edge. I take my four foot square. That's pretty darn close. I might need just an eighth of an inch more.
That should get it. It's not difficult work, but you just need to pay close attention to these small details and it really is easy work. You just have to pay attention. perfect. So again, remember with a, a boat like this, with an outrigger and a, a kayak, let's say you got it a half inch off. It's not going to matter. It's still going to go true. You probably won't see it. You definitely won't notice it. Um, but you always want to try for perfection. Okay. Now that we are sure that it's square, I can now shoot the two holes through here, one at a time, one hole, one bolt. Do not drill both holes and then throw your bolts. Drill one hole, throw one bolt, then drill the second one. Remember too, you don't wanna drill it down low. If you drill it down low, you won't be able to spin your little wing nut on. So you drill it not center, but ever so slightly above center. Okay, one added thing. You might not want to wear sandals when drilling holes because then you get steel shavings, <laughs> aluminum shavings in your feet. Okay, now that I've got this one drilled, kind of wallowed out a little bit and set with a screw, I can start on my last hole again remembering not to go down low or even in the middle. I'm going somewhat, not way up high, but just a little higher than 50%, so 60. Okay, so now I've got my last hole drill. Make sure that it's here. Now if you if you notice, there's a there's ever so slightly a crookedness of, to this particular screw. Well, that's okay. Like I said, this is all hand drilled. There's going to be a little difference in every single boat. This one, if you'll notice, too, ever so slightly close to this bolt system. I'll put that right there. She's done. Now, just like the back, I need to identify the cross tube and which is left and which is right. So I've got one dot, two dot. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put three dots here, three dots there, four dots here, four dots there. Now I can identify exactly which way the cross tubes go on when I'm just picking it up and throwing it together. Okay, so here I go, putting the marker dots down. That's all it is, is just a little bing, bing. And so then I put on this flange, just not don't try to not go through the metal. I'm just making a, a dot. Now, I could leave this with nothing on it, but it is number four, so I'm just gonna put four dots. Voila. Okay, now this is an important step. When installing the runner rails, 
onto the cross tubes. These are the runner rails. This is a cross tube. It goes across the boat. I've provided you with this guide, which kind of acts as if it is a uh, drill press, so that you can use, and I'm going to skip the, uh, the larger uh, one inch, uh, half inch hole uh, that I normally drill for the cross tubes when, they're, when I'm not using runner rails, and going with stainless, and they are um, 5 16 And so I'm using the 5 16 bit, I line it up. Oh, by the way, I have to clamp that down. I also clamp down the other end to, to hold it in place. And I just go through. I have to tighten that up a little bit. for my battery to go out. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> okay, now that I have my hole drilled, I remove my guide, and that's going to be repeated over here. I take the bolt that's provided in your kit, and once again, always drill one hole, throw your bolt through, and then the other. Do not drill all your holes and expect them to line up. They never, ever will. Uh, so with this application, I'm using wing nuts and stainless here. Reason being is because once we fix the hull via the riser to the cross, uh, to the runner rail, which, by the way, you have to you, you find out where you want it farther forward or farther back. That depends on where you're carrying your weight load. That's another reason I don't pre-drill, because every kayak is different, and everyone who uses a kayak uses it differently. You may keep more weight in the front, so you want to put that hole a few inches forward, then drill your hole. We'll go over that uh, here shortly as well. But let me get back to what I was saying is... I use the wing nuts and the stainless here when I'm using the runner rail instead of the quick release pins, which I normally use when I'm just doing a, a straight um, across uh, uh, without the runner rail, just uh, attaching this to the cross tube. I use these quick release pins, but here I like to use the stainless. And uh, I use stainless here this way. The, the runner rail will be completely attached to the uh, the hull, the center hull part, and fairly well permanently, so that you don't have to disassemble everything to put your boat together or take it apart. You just throw these four wing but uh, wing nuts off, and then whoosh, the whole thing comes off. And then you'll leave, uh, as you'll see later. Uh, this will be attached to the two cross tubes. Uh, runner rails. Okay, we're almost done. We're in the home stretch here. If you had a one-sided outrigger, which is a popular kit, um, this is all you would have. Of course, we're going to attach this next. But when you get a one-sided outrigger, you get six-foot cross tubes. Now, six-foot cross tube on this boat, as you can see, would be this much farther out from the center boat, which some people like. You can put more decking on it, put three deckings. But you can also chop it down to whatever length or width uh, that is that you are looking for. And so that's entirely up to you, but you get six footers with the kit. Now, when we come back, I'm gonna show you how we mount the center uh, hull with the risers onto the runner rails. Okay. With your kit, whether it's a one-sided kit or two sides like this one, you're going to have stainless steel 
bolts. One's a little shorter than the other. The longer of the two bolts is the ones that I use to go through the two inch and a half um, aluminum cross tube and runner rail. That's the longer of the two. The shorter of the two goes through the runner rail and the plastic, which is called starboard, of the um, riser. Now, these get wing nuts. No need for a washer when you're going metal to metal. These, however, do get a washer. So when you get your kit, you'll know what washers go with where. So you go through, put a washer, and then you're going to have what's called a nylock nylon locking nut that goes on here and i've said it before in this video do not spin it on quickly certainly don't use a power tool because if you do the nylon will heat up seize to the stainless steel bolt and then you got to get a grinder out hack it off and go find another bolt because they don't have extras in the kit uh, so here's what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure that my hull is lined up properly. Uh, here we, where's my drill? Well, okay, now I'm ready to drill the hole through the runner rail and through the riser. You line it up as best you can to make sure that you're getting it close to the, if you'll see where the curve of the riser quits, that's where you want your riser, uh, excuse me, your, your runner rail. Your riser at the edge of the curve, the radius that is, is where the uh, cross tube, uh, excuse me, the, the runner rail is gonna go. So you can start a hole I got a piece of wood here that's because you don't want to drill a hole in the top of your boat now I'm going to use my guide you can use clamps here but it's pretty close so I've got my my wood board here so that I don't accidentally drill a hole through the top of my uh, hull and once I start it And uh, yep, believe I got it all the way through. Now, again, you may need to clean up those holes. You may need to wallow it out a little bit, but it looks like this one. Yeah, it's just going to go straight through. Now here. You're just going to have to get a little dexterity about you. Ta-da. So you get that together. And then the next thing you're going to do is not drill the hole on the opposite side of the one you just drilled. Instead, you're going to come to the forward part so that you can also line it up at the edge where the radius starts. Drill the hole here, and then drill the other two holes. But do not drill this one and this one, because you might be, if you look at this right now, you might not be looking that, oh crap, it's not lined up. That's why you drill one here, one there, and then drill the other two.
back here. Slippery little bugger. We're in the home stretch. This is the problem that I have. I, my fingers don't work very well. I might need some help with this. My old fingers are being videoed. Oh, great. All right, even with severe arthritis, an old fart like me can occasionally get a nut just like a squirrel. I got it on there. <laughs> Blind squirrel can find a nut once in a while. Make sure that I don't drill a hole in top of my boat. All right, we are really close to the end. As a matter of fact, if you're doing a one-sided outrigger, you are at the end. Um, and if you're doing a two-sided outrigger, just do the same thing over there. Now, here's what we just did. We bolted with stainless steel bolts through the riser, through the runner rail. So runner rail to riser, it's the short stainless bolt and the nylocks so that the uh, the risers, the center hull part, and the runner rails will stay put. They'll just pretty much always be there. The cross tube and the runner rail is held on with wing nuts. Remember too, use a little plumber's tape or something to keep the wing nuts from uh, rattling free, especially if you're using a gas engine. Gas engines cause rattle. Uh, and so, whoosh. We have the bow part on here, and this is the stern part, which is the same part as the bow, by the way. It's just symmetrical. You slide that right on there. You take your wood pin, you slide it through, it's your keeper. Make it good and snug and you're done. All right, now that we've got the stern and the bow and the center section on, uh, you can see that this particular boat, we put the center of the expander craft outrigger to the center of the Hobie because this particular Hobie is a one-person boat and it's pretty well centered. Some Hobies are farther back or even a tandem that usually is you have a dog in front and a human in the back. You might want to take this and attach it farther backwards. That's why I don't drill these holes for you because I don't know where you're going to need them. Uh, and that's pretty well the kit. You want to make sure that you use the wood planking when you're drilling the holes and you don't drill a hole through the top of your hull. You want to make sure that you get this lined up and remember you drill this one and then you drill the front one. Do not drill this one and this one before you drill the front. You drill one here right at the cusp of the curve or the radius and then you do the same in the front. And you can do this on the ground as well. We just happen to have it up high it's a little easier to work on and I got enough equipment to do so. Um, shortly we're going to show you about uh, decking and, and how we do the decking. Again if you were doing a one-sided outrigger you'd be done. If you're doing the two sides you simply replicate what you've done here on the other side 
and about three and a half, four hours um, is what I get, uh, what I, it takes me to do this. Uh, the, everything here is the same, whether you're doing a one-sided or two-sided outrigger. The installation part from here is exactly the same. And you only need those simple hand tools. I hope that uh, this video helps. And uh, shortly we'll be going over the uh, decking. Okay, here we are, the very end. Now we've got decking on here. Um, I've thrown the decking in. I have not shown you how we do the bunks. That's a whole nother video. I got videos on that anyway. But this is how we strap them down. And also, if you'll notice on this boat, it's an eight foot beam all together. And when you've, you've, you've got the aluminum uh, planking all the way out like this, it acts kind of like a protector. If you were to go up against the dock, it would hit the aluminum instead of hitting your plastic hulls. That's a good thing. Um, also, this is two 11 and a half inch wide planks. You want to keep them about a quarter inch apart, which is pretty easy because of the way we strap. But let's say you really, really, really want a lot of decking. That's why I called it expand a craft. If you wanted to make this boat nine feet wide or nine feet one and three quarter inches, I don't care. Then, oops, you're talking about this. And it's not lined up all, uh, uh, right now. We are just kind of mocking it up. But now you've got three six foot deck planks on one side of your kayak. You could stand up here and do the jitterbug. You're not going to fall. Well, you might fall overboard, but you're not going to tip the boat over. It's that stable. Um, and so that you could, say, cast net or what have you. You could do that with only two feet. Though. Typically, this is what we get. is two planks on either side. This particular one is maxed out at eight feet because we plan to put a pretty good size sail on it. Larger than this boat was designed for. Uh, interestingly enough, expand the craft outriggers are more than twice the volume of the Hobie outrigger, uh, which this one is designed to have outriggers uh, as a, uh, an upgrade, but at three times the cost of what an expand the craft is and less than half the volume. So you can hopefully see the value in expand the craft outriggers over the skinny little Hobies and um, all these other little blunt uh, outriggers that might be out there. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed the video and here are a few pictures of the boat all complete both in the water and on the trailer. Don't forget, you can take almost any kayak and put an outrigger kit like this on there. Uh, this particular one, being an older kayak, we really breathed in a whole new life to it. Completely, utterly changed what it was from just a plain, ordinary, old pedal-powered kayak to an adventure uh, kayak with outriggers. Uh, quite a lot of uh, volume there, as you can see in these pictures, so that you can transform any kind of kayak into something like this. Remember, check us out on Facebook and also on our website at expandacraft.com.